So welcome to another financial analysis. And today we're looking at a fairly interesting company called Crichton's. Now, you may not have heard of Crichton's, but I'm sure that you will have seen some of their products in the shops. So Crichton's are the, uh, is the parent company of a group uh, involved in creating the finest quality personal care and beauty products. And there you can see uh, a number of their products on, the, uh, uh, on your screen. So uh, things like shampoo, uh, but high end, high quality. Um, we have been asked to look at this company by Liam. So here's a request from Liam. Uh, Liam and uh, Liam, this is for you. So let's have a look at their account. We're going to be looking at the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow, some fundamental analysis to see what we can find out about the financial performance of this company. Okay, so let's pull up their accounts. Here they are. So the first thing we notice is that it's not a very glossy report. They haven't spent a lot of money kind of making this look really nice. A company with some really high-end, high-quality products, uh, they haven't spent a lot of time on their report. And we are going to miss out um, most of the beginning, and we're going to jump straight into the numbers. So we're going to find the income statement, and here is the consolidated income statement. So we're not just looking at the company, we're looking at the whole group. This is all of the different products, and what you'll probably find is that each product has a different company. So what do we see from the income statement? So first of all, we notice that the sales um, are increasing. So they, uh, year on year, their sales have increased by about 9%. So that's got to be a good um, sign. A company is uh, growing. Um, the margin, so here's the gross profit. So there's a pretty good gross profit going on. Um, they're making about 42% gross margin. So 39%, 42%. Um, so basically, for every uh, tube of, tooth, uh, of, of uh, shampoo that you're buying, effectively it costs them 60p to make that can of uh, the, that tube of uh, shampoo. Um, and so if they sell it for a pound, it costs them 50p, they get to uh, keep 40p. That's effectively what we're saying here. And that's a pretty constant margin. Um, quite a lot of administrative expenses, so uh, quite difficult to run the company like this. Lots of different products, lots of uh, uh, people in marketing and sales and distribution. Um, uh, they've got distribution costs in there as well, um, uh, but they're still making an operating profit, and it's about 7 or 8%. So down here, their operating profit is pretty good. Um, you'll notice the finance costs in this year have increased, suggesting that they've taken on more debt. So if your interest payments go up, either you're being charged a high rate of interest or you have more debt. It looks to me on the face of it like they have a bit more debt. But the bottom line is these guys are making a pretty healthy profit. So uh, they're making about three million pounds on turnover of 47, 48 million pounds. That's about a 7% uh, net margin. Um, and it's uh, similar uh, on both years. So from the income statement, nothing really to kind of, you know, to, to, to get nervous about, nothing to kind of highlight. Looks a pretty a solid, well-run company. It's not making massive profits, but it's a competitive market, but it is making a profit, which is good. Let's go and have a look at the balance sheet. Um, and uh, the balance sheet, here it is. So we see in the balance sheet, so the top half of the balance sheet, we're looking at the assets. Um, here we see the non-current assets. So the non-current assets are things we need to run a business like tables and chairs and plant and machinery and equipment. Um, you'll notice this right of use assets has come in. Um, that's merely an accounting standard. That's a leased asset. So uh, previous years, um, you just showed it as a lease, as a cost of, of renting an asset. Now you actually have to take it onto the balance sheet and show the asset on one side and the lease liability on the other so it kind of nets off against each other so let's not get distracted about that figure there but what i would like to do is to look at this one here so we see the property plant and equipment there's a significant amount of investment going on so they've gone from about 2.4 million to about 6 million in investment okay so this company is growing and it looks to me like there's a kind of you know they had nine percent growth in sales year on year from 2019 to 2020. It looks to me like there's doing a significant investment and that there's going to be a big uh, a growth, but at least that's what they're gearing up for. Uh, in terms of the balance sheet, um, we noticed that there are there's quite high 
um, on the sorry the current assets. So the current assets are things that we own, which are either cash or going to become cash soon. We notice the inventories have dropped slightly. The inventories are actually quite high. Um, interestingly enough, that if we do some analysis of that industry, it looks to me that on average it's taking them over a hundred days to sell their inventory from the moment they get the raw materials put them together into the finished products and ship them is taking 100 days. Now that's quite a long time. So it's actually quite good to see this company with the inventories coming down. It looks like they're starting to really kind of focus on you know, reducing their inventory, although it's only a marginal amount. Uh, trade and receivables up a little bit, up about 12%. Again, we'd expect that if you increase your sales by 9%, you'd expect your trade and other receivables to increase as well. And what you'll also notice is they've got a lot of cash in the bank, which is fantastic. So um, they've increased their cash uh, from about 3 billion to 3.7, sorry, three, uh, 350,000 to 3.7 million uh, uh, between 2019 and March 2020. So don't forget, this is during the pandemic. People are staying at home, uh, yet they are investing in these products. And this is really, really good news um, for this company. Uh, if we look at the um, the uh, uh, the bottom half of uh, the liabilities, um, current liabilities, so things we have to pay quite soon, hasn't really changed. That's absolutely fine. Again, the trade and other payables has gone up a little bit. That's probably again reflecting uh, the increase. You know, fourteen percent increase. That's not massive. That's not a big issue. Um, and there's no other real liabilities. You'll notice. Um, the, uh, the obligations under leases has increased, but that's merely because they've had to bring certain assets onto the balance sheet. But what we do notice here is this number here, 2.8 million of borrowings, which weren't there last year. So if you remember in the income statement, we see the interest payable has increased. The reason the interest payable has increased is because they've uh, increased their borrowings and they've used those borrowings to buy additional assets to invest in the future of the business. OK, so this is all starting to add up. You know, it's making sense. Uh, if we look at the share capital um, down the bottom, the, ec the equity, we can see that um, the share premium account staying pretty constant. So there's a little bit of share issues going on, not a lot. And you'll notice that they've got strong retained earnings. So this is a company that's been making profits in the past. Some of those profits are paid out as a dividend, but most of those profits are reinvested back into the business, which is fantastic. So they are funding the growth through equity, but there's a little bit of debt as well in order to accelerate that growth. So what we notice in the movement in equity is that these guys are, um, they are paying dividends. So here we see, uh, this is the previous year's dividend. They paid 233 million uh, the previous year. Uh, and um, in this year, um, if we just scroll that up a little bit, we'll see the um, the, the, the share pay, the dividend payment for this year, three hundred and fifty million pounds. So they're making a profit. You'll notice that the total profit they make, so three three million pounds of profit, they're only paying out three hundred and fifty thousand. So you know most of the profit is being put back into the business in order to fund this future growth. But if you're a shareholder, you are getting a little bit of income, which is good. So. Uh, cash flow. Let's go and have a look at the cash flow. Uh, here's the cash flow statement. So um, in terms of their cash flow statement, uh, what we see is the cash generated from operating activities. That's this number up here. Um, we see that they are generating cash. Now you'll notice that between last year and this year, that number has gone up significantly. So we'll just double check as to what is going on. And actually what we see in the previous year is there's a big negative number. Um, so you know their, their profit has increased um, as they've grown their business and therefore their cash generation has actually increased. And in the previous year, they had a big increase in inventory. So they, 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 you know, they ramped up uh, production. Maybe that was, um, uh, that would have been you know, before the pandemic hit, for example. Um, so they ramped up production. They had a lot of inventories, a lot of cash tied up in that inventory. And what they've managed to do is to release a lot of that. So if you remember, the inventory has come down slightly. So in effect, if these numbers here are small, uh, then it's giving us a kind of confidence that the cash generated 
is 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 very reminiscent of the underlying cash generation from the actual operating uh, activities of the business. They're basically generating five million a year. The previous year they were making four million, but of that four million, two and a half was being tied up in additional uh, uh, inventory or stock. So a little bit further down the cash flow, we see the uh, investing activities. And in terms of the investing activities, uh, very uh, notable is the purchase of property, plants and equipment. So about a million in the previous year, but this year, significant investment in production facilities um, uh, uh, as this company is starting to gear up for rapid growth. And that is funded through uh, this loan, three million uh, of loan. Uh, and that's really um, where we see the um, uh, the financing. So they've got positive financing. They've got money coming in because they're borrowing money and they're using that money to invest uh, in the future of the business. But they can afford it, so it's not a problem because uh, you know they're generating cash. They've got they've kept some cash in the bank. Um, you know it looks pretty uh, well run from that perspective. Um, I would mention in terms of if we go back to the balance sheet, the uh, the working capital. So looking at the uh, uh, looking at the working capital is the consolidated balance sheet. So the working capital we're comparing the current assets, which is about twenty million, with the current liabilities, which is about nine million. So the working capital is really not a problem at all. The liquidity ratio. Uh, it's about 2.23 uh, times. And even if you eliminate stock, so something we call the acid test uh, is to look at this ratio, but to ignore this stock figure, for example, we still get a ratio of 1.4, which is basically saying for every uh, uh, pound they owe and have to pay soon, they've got one pound and 40p either as cash or coming in as cash soon, if you ignore inventory, which is good. However, what I would uh, identify is that it is, uh, they do have a, a slow moving stock. It takes them 100 days to get the stock out of the business. It takes them another 62 days on average to collect the money in from the people they're selling to. They'll be selling to supermarkets and the supermarkets will be using uh, their, their negotiating power. People like Superdrug as well will be using their negotiating power to really extend payment terms. And they're paying, it looks to me like they're paying their suppliers in about 16 days. Uh, and this is going to put a big strain. So that effectively means that they have 148 days of working capital requirement. Okay, so it takes them 102 days to sell the stock. It takes them another 62 days to collect the money in. So that means the money is coming in on day 164. They're paying on day 16. That means they've got 148 days to fund the business. Now, it doesn't look like uh, they are undercapitalized. However, uh, that ratio there, uh, they can't really go much much further than that. Okay, so they so they do need that money in that working capital. They need to be careful that they don't overextend themselves and find that they actually run out of cash as a result. So uh, I'm pretty sure the management will have a pretty close eye on that. So, uh, and finally, the dividend, as we as we mentioned, is very much affordable. So, what does all this mean in terms of the uh, the, the company and the market value? So, let's go and have a look at their um, share price. So, here's their share price. It's been pretty relentlessly going up over the last five years, reflecting you know a a, a strong company, a well run company. Um, the the P ratio is about fifteen times earnings. So that's relatively cheap. So 15 times, that's round about a sort of, you know, 6% yield, for example, um, on this uh, company. So you're getting a little bit of income, you're getting capital growth, they're investing for the future, they're expecting to see that, you know, sort of push on up uh, into the future. So, you know, given that, you know, you can find stocks in America that are trading on 30 times and Tesla, for example, on, you know, sort of thousands of times earnings to get a pick up a stock like this on 15 times earnings that looks a you know, you know a company with with pretty strong brands brands a pretty strong uh, a consumer base you know looks like actually this could be a a, a good investment um, in terms of the inherent goodwill uh, the market cap is 56 uh, uh, just over 56 about 57 million pounds um, and the balance sheet is 15 million pounds so there's 40 million pounds um, uh, of inherent goodwill. Um, that doesn't appear unreasonable to me. Um, 
the you know it's really about the p ratio the, the fact that the, the multiple of earnings looks pretty good value so there we have uh, Crichton's, you know, that's my fundamental analysis. Now, I don't know the business. Uh, I don't know the kind of, you know, the, where it's working, you know, whether they've lost contracts or gained contracts or whether, um, you know, that, that expansion plan is really sort of, you know, starting to come through. So, you know, if you've got any inside, um, not inside trading, but if you've got, you know, opinions about, you know, why this is a good company to invest in or not a good company to invest in, then please do add uh, to the comments. So uh, hopefully you found that a useful um, uh, analysis. Please do like, share and subscribe to the channel and uh, leave any other comments in the comments box and I will see you on the next analysis.